G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and the other day I did an episode talking about the Salamanders and their uh, their level of strength represented upon the tabletop. I also did an episode prior to that on the Imperial Fists, and something that I brought up about the Salamanders was how very, very weak they are in comparison to most other legions. But I also brought up the point that against something like the Solar Auxilia, Militia, or Demons, they are incredibly strong. And I wanted to look a little bit more into that today because this is something that is a system-wide, I won't say issue, but a uh, feature. We'll call it a feature of Heresy 2.0 um, in quotation marks. So what this particular feature is, well, let's take a step back because there's a bit of a story here, okay? Imagine you are Mr. Circle. Okay, and you sit down in oh, February, March or so of last year, and you're reading through this particular document uh, that I have on screen, the leaked playtest. Um, you know, someone has generously supplied it to you, and they say, you know, what do you think about all this? And you're looking through it, and you very quickly realise that, well, the AP on all these weapons is, is just, it's awful. All the big you know, blasts and templates are gone. You scroll down to something like, oh, you know, different uh, demolisher cannons and things like that. Like, where have we got demolishers? Uh, up here somewhere. Uh, artillery. You see that, oh, three inch blast, only AP3, you know, AP4, fives, fours, lots and lots of fours. And you think to yourself, huh? Oh, that's that's no good because you know at the same time as they've done this they've given terminators you know and a lot of other units double wounds uh there's more two plus armor saves baked into the game uh and heavy is out there everywhere so a lot of units are going to be getting you know re-rollable two plus saves so these weapons aren't going to do much at all on the tabletop and um you know so you you look at that kind of thing and you say to yourself oh well, that's that's not very good and then you go out and you make a video um, to that effect, which is what I did. People go, yeah, but you know what? It really sucked having to play games and just losing whole squads to artillery fire. And I would agree with them to some extent on that. Yes, you know, you could get dunked upon by artillery. But artillery costs a lot of points. Like a pair of Medusas was quite a points investment. And nearly every game I play with my Medusas in my Ultramarines, they died first turn. So a savvy player who spread his stuff out usually didn't suffer too much from those sort of effects. And a lot of people were out there just sort of ignoring how many benefits they've been given for fighting against templates and just focused in on the fact that they suffered under templates as they were written. Okay, not ignoring the many different layers to the onion of performance. And they said how, you know, it was so bad for the game and how it shouldn't be a thing and it sucks losing whole squads. And I want to flash that forward to today. And the reason I went through this sort of convoluted story is that the Solar Auxilia, the Militia, and to an extent when they arrive, Demons, because let's face it, they're not going to have power armor saves, all unfairly suffer in the game because of the way these rules are written. Because AP4, especially Strength 6 and AP4, is so widespread. So let's look at some examples here in uh, in auto weapons. Let's see, the auto cannon, Reaper auto cannon, Curious assault cannon, Gravis auto cannon, Gravis auto cannon, battery, Predator cannon, Punisher rotary cannon, Accelerator auto cannon, uh, obviously the Fell Blades accelerator cannon, the Skyrim Battery, Anvilus Auto Cannons, Anvilus Snub Auto Cannons, Leviathan Storm Cannons, the Kratos' Cannons in all their shapes and forms. All of these weapons in this list, except for the Astartes Shotgun and the Rotor Cannon, are not only going to ignore the saves of Solar Auxilia and Militia, they are going to instant kill them, even if you have Feel No Pain, because they are double your toughness. So we've said that it's not fair on Marine players because they might lose five or six Marines to, you know, a really, you know, nasty uh, demolisher cannon hit. But we're saying we think it's fair 
that a bunch of solar auxilia who are, you know, depending on what sort of provenance, they're not provenances, but whatever, um, you know, particular doctrine they're running, they could be touching base to base. They could lose 20 guys to a single shell. And, and that is somehow acceptable for them, but reprehensible to marine players. And I don't quite get that logic. You know, um, to ram this point home, the legacies of the uh, Age of Darkness PDF, this document here, okay, uh, Achilles Quad Launcher on the Achilles Lamb Raider, Strength 8, AP4, Heavy Force, Sunder, uh, Basilisks, Strength 9, AP4, Shred and Pinning, so yeah, good luck fighting that. Uh, the Medusas, Strength 9, AP4, Pinning. The Whirlwind, Strength 6, AP4, Large Blast as well. You know, at least it's not pinning this one. But this is a trend we are seeing constantly. And we also get this down in the Super Heavies down here. Uh, the Battle Cannon on the Bane Blade. Uh, and on the Melkador. The Minotaur. All of these weapons are almost purpose-built to crush the dreams of Solar Auxilia players. And... I bring this up because I don't think they factored that into the points of the game when it comes to balancing the game. Because a tank, or any unit really, that is performs well against the Legion as Astartes, is going to perform exponentially better up against the Solar Auxilia. If you fire a, I don't know, a Basilisk, into a squad of Terminators. Even if the Terminators are all bunched together, for a start, you're going to hit half as many models because they're on such bigger bases. Uh, then you're going to roll to wound. Yeah, you're going to wound them. Come on, you're strength and eye. They're only toughness four. You're going to wound them. Um, but then those Terminators are going to get a two plus three rollable armor save against that Basilisk. And even if you hit, let's say, seven of them, probably only one's going to fail their save. And on the reroll, they're going to pass their save. It's like a 1 in 36 chance of actually failing a save. On the other hand, Solar Auxilia squad gets hit by the same thing. How many models can be covered? Well, it's a lot more than 7. But even if you went with just 7, that's just 7 dead. Because you're going to get well, 9 rolls to wound, needing 2s to wound with a re-roll. You're going to wound them all. Um, cover is just not a thing this edition, let's face it. So that's not going to help. Uh, they're not going to get saves because it's AP4. Uh, they're not going to get full note pain because it's strength knights three times their toughness. So really, where is the effectiveness of this unit now lie? And they've charged a certain number of points. You know, if I scroll back up to wherever the basilisk was... Uh, here we go. 200 points for Basilisk Squadron. Yeah, that might be fair when you're playing against Solar Auxilia, or if you're a Solar Auxilia player paying that many points to use one against the Marines. What's it worth to you then? Because, to me, that's a, it's a completely different outcome. And that's okay if you're in a situation, perhaps, where you are playing a friendly game at home. Right? But when you go to an event or something like that, do you, you know, you want, we want to encourage players to take things that are not just Marines to everything, right? But what happens when you're the sole auxilia player and you rock up and the Marine player opposite you thought he was being nice, spent 600 points and took, you know, three Basilisk Squadron. Well, it's actually like, you know, 570 or something. But what's that Marine player have to do? Either he doesn't play with his toys that he paid money for, built and painted, and he politely shoots the ground in front of your models, and just basically tanks his own game to help you out. Or he plays the game as it's intended, and he just dumps on you mercilessly with those three basilisks. Which of these situations sounds fun for either player? I don't think it sounds very fun. And so I have a real issue with the way this is being implemented. What they should have done, in my opinion, was a blanket artillery nerf across the edition in regards to points. Make them more expensive and less desirable. Because artillery is innately desirable. And 
this is a, this is a bit of a phenomena to go over here. In 2.0, if you're playing a tank, you do not have the ability to use reaction fire the same way infantry and dreadnoughts do, because you are limited to defensive weapons only. And this is a big issue, because it means you don't want to be on the receiving end of enemy fire, because you have nowhere near the ability to respond to it as, say, an infantry squad does. If you are the one firing, well, you're an awful lot more brittle than an infantry squad. Vehicles are very, very, well, soft, this edition. You know, a few hull points is all that stands between you and a LAS cannon. That's not great odds. It's, if a 10-man LAS cannon squad fires at a Predator tank, they should kill it 10 out of 10 turns uh, that you try that. Because it's just, the sheer amount of firepower is just overwhelming. Even if they roll poorly and only glanced you, they're only chasing a few glances to kill your vehicle. Four glances, right? Uh, and they only need, you know, threes to hit, fours to do it. That's not an awful lot. And there are plenty of ways of buffing into Blissy Skill 5. So, vehicles as a whole suffer because reaction fire is very, very dangerous to them. Uh, if you are firing auto cannons with your vehicle at, say, a heavy support squad, or maybe you're firing at an Ultramarines player and he uses his uh, Legion Reaction to get his Laz Cannon squad to fire back at the tank that just shot at a Bolt Gun squad. You know, that sucks for you, right? You've got to think through your moves. Uh, you've really got to think through your moves because of the way reactions work. But if you're using artillery, there is no counter to that. There is no response to that because no one can reaction fire you with their own artillery which is a bit of a shame because I think that counter-battery fire is a really cool thing uh, and should be in the game at some point, but nobody can respond to you. And because nobody can respond to you and you can stay hidden behind objects, you can stay out of range, it means that you're probably going to get your points back and it's more efficient to buy one of these vehicles. So when you look at something like the Scorpius, okay, the Scorpius's uh, ranged weapons down here, the Scorpius Missile Launcher, 48 inches range, so that's uh, on a 6x4 table, that is 4 foot. That's a very solid range. Strength of 8 AP4. Okay, pretty nasty, but it's that rocket barrage rule. That's, that's the real clincher here. Because if we go up and we look at rocket barrage, all the way back here, What do we see? Well, if it did not move, it gains rending 4 plus and pinning. So you're telling me that I have strength 8 AP4 shots with this thing. It's a large blast, which, hell, that strength 10 AP2 on the Demolisher was nerfed to hell and turned to a little 3 inch blast, but the Whirlwind can do a 5 inch blast and it can kill marines on a four to wound. It just will instant kill marines. That seems like it's pretty strong. Well, how expensive is a Scorpius? And then, of course, we, we scroll on up through a bunch of stuff. All the way, all the way back into heavy support. Jeez, it's a long way to go in this book. Do do do. All right, we got there. Uh, where are we? Proteus, Spartan, Scorpius. And then we get to here, it's 120, and you can get a second one for 105. And you get to hide them out on your side of the tail behind a wall. And this is my point. That's way too cheap. Okay? That would have been strong last edition. So, this sort of thing should have been made more expensive to keep these rules. And something like the Vindicator with the rules it's now got should also have been made more expensive. I think 1.0 was much better for a lot of these vehicles than it is now. Especially the the forced buying of sponsors is something I in particular hate. And like I say, Scorpius, this is already strong against Marines. How strong do you think this becomes against Solar Auxilia? Because 120 points, uh, the fact that it was rending if it didn't move, already made it pretty strong as marines it doesn't give it a damage boost against solar auxilia but the pinning this is going to force a pinning check and they do not have the morale to take a pinning check uh, especially if you're hitting them during night fight so it's exponentially stronger than it would otherwise be and like i say it has not been 
baked into the game. Any kind of balance or counter to this. And like I say uh, in the Cell Man's episode, Strength 6 Flamer weapons. So no cover saves, no armor saves, no feel no pain saves. Whatever wound Cell Man is roll on you with anything that's a heavy flamer equivalent or above, it's just instant death to Soul Auxilia because Dragon's Breath Flamers making them an additional point of strength higher again. So strength six heavy flamers. And I don't like this. And I don't like it because I think it's relatively easy to fix. Um, but now that we're into the edition, we're now in a position where it's very hard to fix because really the only way to fix it is to essentially make Soul Auxilia three plus armor saves, which is, that wouldn't fly because they're not in power armor. Uh, and you can't make them cheaper because if you make them cheaper in points, uh, sure, they'll be able to take a lot more Solar Auxilia, but the problem is who has that kind of money? They're already probably the most expensive army uh, to run in games of Horus Heresy because you have a crap load of infantry uh, that are very detailed, very expensive, and they're honestly, having built and painted an army before, a pain in the ass to paint because they're so detailed for essentially a horde army. So that's no solution. So where do you go with it? Well, there needs to be something introduced like portable void shields or something like that that Solar Auxilia squads can purchase to give them some sort of save against this weaponry, I think. Uh, that's what is really needed to be added to the game. Like, a, imagine uh, if people know the Goliath, the, the little um, tracked demolition... Uh, is it Goliath? Uh, the World War II... German little tracked vehicle. And I think Heresy has a version called the Cyclops off the top of my head. That with like a void shield on it. The same way that Tau have like shield drones in 40k. Something to buff Solar Auxilia, buff Imperial Militia, and also it's something that leans a little bit into that dark age of technology. Uh, you know, here is some of the high-tech equipment we have um, that is going to disappear over the next 10,000 years due to, you know, lack of familiarity with it, the uh, fact that it's irreplaceable technology, that it becomes lost technology, whatever it might be. That would be a way to really help out in this situation. Because, like I said, this is just disproportionately strong. If you bring, you know, a couple of Scorpius, um, a whole bunch of quad mortars and... A bunch of basilisks or medusas uh, to play a game against a legion opponent, especially if it's something like Imperial Fist Stone Gauntlet, they're going to be totally cool with it. In fact, they're probably just going to smile and laugh because you're going to have a fun game, right? Because you're probably playing Iron Warriors versus Imperial Fist. And you take that exact same army and then you put it up against a Solar Auxilia player in an event. Again, we're not trying to win all our games here, we're not being, you know, thinking we're all Napoleon. But who do you think is going to have the better game? The Imperial Fist player who, yeah, he's going to make a lot of saves each turn, but that's the thing, he's going to make a lot of saves each turn. The Star Auxilia player is just going to be removing models, and lots of them, every turn. So, not an ideal situation for them, you know? And who wants to play an army where all they do is go through a lot of time and effort and expense really got to reiterate that point to build a, a big solar auxiliary army only to put it on the tabletop and then without any of it doing anything except maybe a couple of their Lehman Russes they have to pull out a dustpan and brush and just sweep the models off the board into a bin it's not very entertaining is it so anyway that's my thoughts on that matter the the game right now is it's a hard power cutoff at AP4. Okay, if you have a 3 plus armor save this edition, you are golden. But if you have a 4 plus armor save this edition, you are in deep shit. And I mean it, you are in deep fucking dog shit in this edition if you have a 4 plus or worse armor save. Because there is so much AP4. A stock Predator tank, for example, or a stock Sikran tank, uh, especially a Sikran Punisher. Like, You think about that. What does a stock Sikran Punisher come at? 190 points, 
It's coming with a Punisher rotary cannon and three heavy bolters by default. You can definitely swap uh, weapons out and add a fourth heavy bolter on top. That's what, uh, 16 heavy bolter shots and 20, um, 15 or 20 shots at strength 5 AP4 uh, and pinning as well, I think they are, from the, the Punisher rotary cannon in addition to that 16 shot. Well, that, the Punisher is designed on its own to just wipe a unit out. Uh, and if you go up against Predators, same sort of thing. Uh, predator tanks, Sigurans, like regular Sigurans, a Predator tank, 120 points for two heavy bolters and a Predator auto cannon. That's still 12 shots, strength uh, 5 and 7. And if you're playing someone like Imperial Fists or Blood Angels, they could be swapping those out to Assault Cannons. And I mean Imperial Fists, come on. Assault Cannons and Auto Cannons with Ballistic Skill 4 with plus 1 to hit against Solar Auxilia. You're not telling me that's not going to be a bloodbath? Yeah, this is... <laughs> I just pulled it and it couldn't lose, and, and, and I'm in deep shit. Uh, and of course, Salamanders. Like I said, Salamanders, they are just, if they get close to you, like Pyroclasts, I reckon three squads of Pyroclasts could probably table a 2,000 point Solar Auxilia army on their own. Because two plus armor saves, like I'd probably if, add, add apothecaries to those squads, right? Three squads of power class with apothecaries. Yeah, I reckon they would solo two thousand points of solar auxilia. I'd be pretty comfortable making that guess. In fact, I would tempted to hit my friend JJ up and actually try that out, because really, apart from Gravis Laz cannons, you're gonna have two plus saves, five plus feel no pain. Two wound per model with it will not die. Uh, I think five plus on them. Uh, you're using strength six AP4 flamers and you have a melter gun for backup. And if they do try and charge you, you have a D6 shot wall of death on every model. Um, yeah, no, that is terrifying to a Solar Auxilia player. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my thoughts. Anyway. That's it from me, back with the Outer Circle. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you think that Sol Auxilia and Imperialist Militia will need some sort of shield drone type unit? Um, I'm thinking a small tracked Imperial vehicle with a void shield, like a portable void shield generator that just grants an invulnerable save to the squad, like a 5 plus um, invulnerable save bubble, something like that. Is I think it's heavily required for them, um, especially because of the way blast and templates work. You can't just hide behind something like an Aegis defense line, okay, because the shell comes in from above, not from the front. The line does nothing. It needs to be an area effect shield. Um, but I'm curious what you think. Do you play Solar Auxilia or Militia, and does this concern you? Uh, and players who play both Solar Auxilia and Astartes and have faced this situation, I want to hear from you. How did you find it? Because I play one person here uh, who was using a bunch of Mechanicum stuff that only had four up saves, uh, or worse, and I was just killing so many things. So, um, and that was with um, only uh, lower strength blasts as well. So, anyway, that's it. See you on the next episode.